Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, on this, not Wednesday, but this beautiful Thursday morning, amen. I want to call it Thankful Thursday, Thankful Thursday. And that would be so apropos because we're going to talk about kingdom worship and in particularly how that the sacrifice, hallelujah, praise, the sacrifice of worship, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And we're really going to get into that matter of how powerful thanksgiving is to trigger the miracle working supernatural power of God in our lives. Yes, come on. This, this thing is so broad, so much more than we have thought it. And when I say this thing, I'm talking about this matter, this subject of worship, praise, uh, inclusive, uh, thanksgiving. Uh, we use the word sometimes thanksgiving, praise and worship interchangeably, but they all have distinctions. And we're going to highlight those distinctions today, but the overview is worship, kingdom worship, and I'm going to show you in the scriptures, and we may not get to get it all in today because there's so much to share, but Jesus came preaching, introducing the kingdom of God. Good morning, Lady Rhonda. You are first. Hallelujah. And uh, pray that all this well, and thank you for coming in, my sweetheart. I want everybody to come in. I want you to share. I want you to tag someone. Let them know that the Apostle Gary Deloach is live on Facebook and on YouTube. And I am the Apostle Gary Deloach. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Now, let me get back to my statement and finish it. Don't want to just kind of sometimes we start things and don't finish. But I was talking about the fact that how important Thanksgiving is. And it's such a broad topic, praise and worship and thanksgiving that I think that we have not quite uh, fathomed in our, our spiritual mind, in our hearts, how great a vehicle God has given us to access him, to access heaven, to access all the blessings of God. I mean, he, he doesn't have to come down. He's given us, amen, the, the wherewithal through his word how we can release miracles. And Jesus came preaching the kingdom. I like to call him, this, this phrase popped up in my spirit this morning while in early morning study. He's, he's the catalyst, amen, the catalyst uh, of the kingdom. He's the one that calls the kingdom to be uh, introduced and begin to be understood. He came preaching the message of the kingdom. So if he came preaching, he had to come demonstrating, yes? Uh, that's one of our mantras in our ministry that we are called to demonstrate, to demonstrate, yes, one more time, to demonstrate praise and worship in these last days. Now, we've been in existence for a while now, so we believe that we're in the last days and we're called to demonstrate, to model, to show this people have I um, created for myself and they shall show forth or demonstrate my praise. Amen. Well, and though it's a lifestyle, it is a ministry that has actions along with attitudes that must be demonstrated before um, the people. We're going to talk about how that um, uh, Thanksgiving is a, um, can be according to what we get from the scriptures. Uh, like worship can be a private posture, uh, but where uh, praise is um, vocal and it is uh, public, vocal and it's public, amen, yes. So when we're praising God, we're testifying, we're telling others of what he's done and who he is and what a, what a uh, vehicle, a testimonial vehicle, what a great testimony that he's given us to praise God, even without confronting anybody individual or one-on-one -on -one or individually, we are talking about our God, proclaiming his names. Amen. That's why it's more than a jump and a shout. My God, when we open our mouths to praise God, so much is being said, is to be said 
about the one who's created us in his own image. I'm excited today. I'm truly excited. Well, we're coming to you not on our regular Wednesday morning, but on Thursday. I wanted to um, um, do it on today for particular reasons and want to make some uh, very important announcements. Now, uh, pray, uh, my prayer is that there be those listening today who will come in and listen that are not used to coming in. Those who have been on it a long time, you're an answer to my prayer, uh, Sandra, my niece. Come on in here, girl. I know you're probably cold up in Michigan, but let the word warm you. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost and the fire of the word, amen, <laughs> begin to warm you. Amen. And we send love to you and the family there in the uh, uh, Flint, Michigan area. Amen. So I want to give the announcement, uh, the announcements, a few announcements and hurry and uh, speedily get into the teaching today because I have a lot to say, I have a lot to share. And I believe that it's going to free somebody. It's going to lose somebody. It's going to help somebody to trigger, trigger, trigger. You're going to hear that word come up a whole lot to trigger a miracle in your life to trigger calls to happen, the calls to exist in your life, a supernatural intervention of God for your life. And I said it, I'm gonna say it again, we saw Jesus do it, he demonstrated how. Amen, amen, amen. Well, tonight, we've been on Wednesday nights with our schedule of Family Prayer Revival in the last several weeks, but uh, um, today uh, the Lord chose for us Thursday, and this is Thursday, and I want you, I'm telling you, you got to get in on it. You just, I believe it's mandated from God that you be a part of this family prayer revival. Wife and I have had a wonderful discussion. We have many of them because we like sharing back and forth in, in, in revelating as God reveals things to us, it gives us revelation concerning the word that we read and study. Amen. If God gives us something in the spirit, we share it with one another. And, and sometimes we want to know, you know, how does that, how do you receive that? Or is that, you know, what do you think about that? Or just, just saying what God said and just saying amen, because it's something that when it's, when it's coming out of the presence of God, it's definitely a blessing to our lives. And we were sharing about the fact that how necessary this prayer is for many families, for many people. Prayer is, uh, and worship like prayer, is like uh, a spiritual lifeline for the believer. I've shared that in my teachings, how it is a lifeline, a spiritual lifeline for the believer. It keeps us connected. Amen. We need connectivity connectivity with God. It keeps us connected. It keeps us joined, amen, to the will of God. That's why Paul would tell the church at uh, Thessalonica, the Thessalonians, he said, um, um, you know, pray without ceasing, pray without ceasing. He said, in all things, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's in my teaching notes today but to pray without ceasing because it keeps us connected and we never want to be outside of the will of God, but we rather always should want to be inside of the will of God. Why, apostle? Because there is safety, there is protection and it keeps, it keeps the flow of God's blessings and promises, healing, deliverance, salvation for your household, all of those things we're in proper posture in alignment with heaven and we receive heaven's best. So it's on your screen there, Family Prayer Revival this week, Thursday, which is today, November the 18th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Amen. That will be 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern and um, uh, 5 o'clock p.m. in Western Pacific time, mountain time, that would be 6 p.m. their time. So 7 p.m. Central Standard, we want you to join in with us. And let me tell you how to come in on the prayer line. We're still having powerful testimonies 
the things that God's doing. And I, and I want to tell you, uh, I think we're going to make an addendum to our announcements, Lady Rhonda. Uh, our, uh, and it's been uh, basically us, the ministry people, at our Monday, Wednesday. We normally have Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but since the prayer revival, we're doing just Mondays and Wednesdays at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. And the Lord has said when we started that some years back, that it would become a lifeline for people beyond the ministry, the scope of the realm of those who are praise centenarians, those who are uh, members and or partners with this ministry. Amen. Because uh, like I said, it's a lifeline. Somebody needs this. And sometimes when we think we're not reaching that, then that's the enemy always wants you to think that you're not touching them. You're not making the difference. That's when you, you got to know he's trying to get you to stop simply because you are touching the lives of people with your prayers, not just you. The Lord tells us through the apostle Paul to Timothy that, you know, he said, would the prayer supplication and thanksgiving be made for all men, for kings, rulers, for nations, rulers, for all men, prayers be made for all. Somebody needs your prayers. So this is how you get in. Conference line is 267-807-9611, 267-807-9611. And the access code is 577-327-POUND or hashtag. I'm going to leave that there for just a few seconds more. So we invite you now, come on in, come on in, tag somebody, share with somebody, start a watch party. Amen. We're going to, we're going to go through this. We're not going to just um, go at a hundred miles an hour because, because somebody may miss something uh, because it may be too fast and you can always go back and look at it. We, we have that advantage for you. Go out uh, to join this broadcast every week. You just need to come on my page, and that's Facebook page. It's Gary D. Loach. Yes, you're on it now. Amen. And then our YouTube channel. Amen. The YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel where you can sit in your living room and just connect it and put it on your screen, your device. Type in Gary D. Loach Ministries. Gary D. Loach Ministries. And like us there and subscribe to the channel, to the ministry channel. And then you can have notifications of any time we're coming on. Uh, and as well as the many uploads of ministry teaching, these teachings, other teachings, events that we have had and uh, announcements as to what we're going to do uh, for future events. You can have that at your disposal on our YouTube channel. Yes. I smile every time I say that. I want to smile because um, <laughs> there was a time not so long ago that we were not on these platforms. And I want to say, you know, I, I don't like to use the word pandemic a whole lot. Amen. But thank God in all things we give thanks, not for in all things. Some things that we've seen come to light um, it, had it had it not been for the pandemic, we might not be on these platforms, or especially the YouTube uh, platform by now. Or Amen, and there are other ministries that are have been established going forth. Amen. God letting us know that there is nothing can that can stop the word of God. Upon this rock, Jesus said to Peter. Upon this rock, this rock of truth that he had shared with him, I build my church and the very gates of hell, the gates of hell cannot, shall not, will not prevail against. When they even uh, persecuted the saints at Pentecost, that was great persecution. And when the enemy's motive was to stop the Christians the Jesus people, the Jesus followers from getting the word out, but it was not successful because God's word, amen, will not be suppressed. 
God's word will not be suppressed. As he said, will he not do it? Has he spoken and will he not make it good? For Balaam said to Balak the king, he says, for God has commanded me to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. No demon in hell can reverse the plans of God, amen. So yes, uh, we want you to do that. One more announcement and I'll have some more later, amen. Uh, possibly two more, one more here to give you now is how you can gain access to, uh, if you want to uh, give us your prayer requests that we can pray online tonight and you plan to join us. And even if you can't join us, uh, if it's a private request, of course, you can call our ministry phone, our office phone, 501-983-2355. Once again, our ministry phone number is 501-983-2355. Five, five. And our ministry email, you can email uh, either call a prayer request or a testimony that you want to share concerning the blessings of the Lord that has come your way since, amen, you've been connecting with this ministry. Uh, ministry email is PCC uh, underscore, that little line there, PCC underscore fan at yahoo dot Calm. Yes, reach out. We love to hear uh, what God has done. We love to testify by the medium or the vehicle of praise and worship. Praise publicly. <laughs> Talk about our God. That's what David said. I will praise him before and in the midst of the great congregation. In other words, I'm not going to be ashamed to talk about the goodness of God in the midst of the people. Need them to hear me. There's a time for a private posturing as we worship and give God thanks. Uh, amen for things that we do in our devotional times. But then there are times when we're going to just praise the Lord out. But yes, so yes, you want to do that. You can email us your testimony and your prayer requests. All right. Very good. And this last one here, I want somebody say, Apostle, uh, we'd love to partner with you. We want to sow. How can I sow into the ministry? Someone sold here just last week, uh, went back into uh, archives and went and looked at uh, something, I think on YouTube that we had out there, one of the uh, teachings, glory to God, sowed a seed and was commenting. It's not too late to comment because even though you may not have been there when we were live at it's still the same word. The word is still anointed. Amen. You can partner with us and said, I want to sow. People have said, I want to sow to you monthly. Well, you can connect with us through our email and let us know that. And this is how you can sow into the ministry with your seed offerings. Amen. Dollar sign PCC FAN on our cash app. Yes. Amen. Cash app. Yes. Dollar sign PCCFAN or on our PayPal uh, account, paypal.me, me, forward slash praise center church. There you have it. Amen. 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 Well, let's get with it. Let's get into it because the word of God is quick and the word of God is powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces between the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints in the marrow, bone marrow, marrow of the bone. And it's a discerner, a reader. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's a reader. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our very hearts. Wow, wow, wow. Amen. Well, let's pick up where we left off talking about, amen, the sacrifice of praise. And we're going in, we talked about um, the different sacrifices as pertaining to praise. Sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13 and 15 is one of the most powerful scriptures, I believe, in the New Testament 
concerning, uh, it's one of them, not the only one, concerning praise, concerning worship. By him, therefore, by him, by him, the writer says, by Jesus, because he leads us to understand the power of the name. We cannot worship without using the name of our God or the name of Jesus, his son, and they are one. By him, Jesus, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. That is, continually, let's offer continually words. We really want to highlight words today because it's so significant. We can't leave out important words. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise continuously, continually or continuously. That's all the time. David says, I praise him seven times a day. He said, and so I will give praise and thanks unto the Lord that I may daily perform my vows. It's an everyday thing. Anything that you do every day, every day is a part of your lifestyle system. Amen. It's, it's your lifestyle, what you do. So he says, offer the sacrifice of praise continuously. That is, then, then he tells us what it is. It is the fruit of our lips, what we release from our lips. So then consequently, I'm breaking it down as I uh, quote it. So then consequently, we cannot praise God without our lips, without our mouth. Praising involves the mouth. Praising involves the lips. Releasing words, who are we praising? He is the focus, Jesus. God is the focus of our worship, of our praise. So. Who are we lifting up? We're lifting him up. Amen. He says, that is the fruit of the calves. The Old Testament said the calves, that means the fruit of our lips, giving thanks, giving thanks unto his name. One version says, one translation of the Bible says, uh, acknowledging his name. So, Praise, our praise, people of God, in the kingdom should always include the name of the Lord. Any Anytime we're praising, the name should come up. <laughs> the name of the Lord. We can recite his compound names, whatever, you know, he said himself to be. He's a gyra. Those names should come up in our praise. Because when we release the name, there's so much power that that becomes a trigger that the supernatural power of God can be, begin to go into those situations, go into those circumstances, go where the blessings are that we need and appropriate them to us, bringing forth our deliverance, bringing forth our healing, bringing forth the peace, come on, the, all of those things that we need, restoration, so acknowledging the name, David, David performed the vows of the Lord. We said last week, every day to the point where the boy, even when he was grown, it just followed him. What you, what you do, come on, uh, what you behold the most you become, what you do the most you will become that. That will be an integral part of your life. So in, in, even as he grew up and became a king, He's still all the time seen and heard, you know, praising the Lord, demonstrating, and even in his private time, giving thanks unto the Lord. Even when he goes before the giant as a boy, he says, I come to you in the name. That was 99% of the battle. I'm going to go as far as saying it. That was 100% of the battle already won because when he released the name and followed through with God's instructions as to how he was to defeat that child, he was a vessel of the Lord. But in the name, it changed the whole dynamic. It changed the whole atmosphere. The threats from the enemy meant nothing. It's like the, what, what the enemy through Goliath had said, it's like all the wind just went out of his words like everything dropped. Come on, because now this environment is charged 
Ooh, I'm getting happy already. I'm getting happy. The atmosphere became charged with the name of the Lord of hosts. The host, God goes nowhere without his host. The host representing, uh, referencing an invisible army, glory, God's invisible army, not seen by the natural eye, but in the realm of the spirit. So the victory was won in the realm of the spirit because David used the name. Mm. And what happened? That name, using the name, became a T R I G G E R, a trigger. Okay, I'm just doing a little um, prefacing today. So then, uh, the sacrifice of praise. Want want to talk about Amen uh, Thanksgiving. So uh, a sacrifice we did, and I didn't get to finish saying that it requires discipline. Yes, we. Um, part of the sacrifice of praise is the, let me say, the directing of our, mm -hmm, of our thoughts toward God. We don't always feel like praising God. We don't always feel like going to work when we get up in the morning when it's kind of like uh, the old folks said you didn't get all your sleep out or when you went to bed late or you just had a long, long day and you just really want to turn over on the other side or you want to reach and you know how some of you do begin to hit that, what's that snooze button, get you a few more minutes. And if you're not, if you're not watching, you know, you, you oversleep, you, you ignore that alarm and keep on sleeping. But it's like you have to direct your thoughts toward the Lord. Amen. You don't always feel like it. So it becomes a sacrifice. It becomes a sacrifice. Willing to lose something for the sake of getting something even greater. And in this case, the Lord sacrificed something of value, but you place more value upon who the Lord is in your life. Amen. And because of our connectivity, because of our relationship, because of the fact that we have his salvation given to us. Amen. And what we're going to show you where thanksgiving is, uh, it comes out of the spirit. Thanksgiving is something, uh, is, is, it's, it's not necessarily named as a fruit of the spirit, but what I'm trying to say, thanksgiving essentially is, essentially is an expression. It's an expression of the fullness of the Holy Spirit according to Ephesians 5, 17 through 20. Let me go ahead and state it right quick. I'm just doing this a little premature here, but I just segue into it. So I've got to use it. I've got to say it now. So Thanksgiving is, uh, it emanates out of our spirit through the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians 5, 17 through 20 says, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the spirit. Filled with the spirit. Now, now he says, don't be drunk with wine. It's wrong to be drunk with wine. But guess what this next word he says, but be filled with the spirit. So I believe he's saying to us, it's just as wrong to not be filled with the spirit as it is to be drunk with wine. Be filled with the spirit because being filled with the spirit is gonna lead us into a life of thanksgiving. People who are not filled with the spirit usually don't have a life of thanksgiving because it emanates out of the spirit. It has to do with your connection with God. It has to do with, amen, whose you are and knowing whose you are, come on, and who you belong to, that you are in that group of what the Lord says in Isaiah 42, this people. I'm part of that this people group. Um, uh, the old song mom used to sing, uh, I'm one of them today, highlighting the testimony of Saul before he be, after he became Paul, after he was converted. He said, oh, I used to hate them, but I'm one of them today. I used to persecute them, but I'm one of them. I'm one of those, this people. So because you are, Thanksgiving comes out of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, that helps us to pray. That helps us to know what the will of God is. So the will of God 
is thanksgiving. Let me finish that. 18 verse, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Speak into yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving, here it is, oh my God. So one thing that the will of God says to us and being filled with the spirit teaches us that thanksgiving is imperative. Thanksgiving is a necessity. I'm gonna break down Thanksgiving and how it is used as a word of praise. It is as a word uh, involving our worship. Giving thanks, verse 20, always for all things, giving thanks always and all things unto God in the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's important uh, that we understand that sacrifice of not when we're feeling like it, but we yet will do it. So David says in Psalm 61, he says that, that I may daily perform my vows. So I will sing, I'm going to sing in order to perform my vows. The apostle Paul says to the church at Ephesus, he says, speak and do yourself how in songs, in hymns, and that's speaking to one another. He says that also to the church at Colossae. He says there, speak to one another. He says, speaking to yourselves, that's a plural. You have one self, but he's talking about other selves, people around you. You're speaking to yourselves in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. So yes, I'm going to sing. Psalm 72, David talks about daily performing. Daily, he's going to be praised. I'm, uh, I'm going to be a, a consistent praiser because that's the lifestyle that the Lord is, uh, that he wants me to have. So it's the turning of our thoughts, amen. Disciplining ourselves to give a sacrifice. Discipline, oh, we need that. I need more of that. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Oh, I submit to you that we'll have greater victories and more, vic more of them, more of those, more of them, if we can discipline ourselves. The only reason the children of Israel couldn't get out of the wilderness uh, until 40 years is because they had a problem with discipline, lifestyle daily, doing the same thing until God ordered them to do something different. See, when God has a discipline for our lives that he's uh, laid out for us, we're not at liberty to change it because we just, we, oh, we're tired. I'm tired of doing that. Oh, I gotta do it, I, I gotta get up every morning. Oh, it becomes drudgery. I gotta get up at 5 a.m. and pray. Uh-uh, you can't look at it like that. It's a discipline. Men ought to always pray, always. Anytime he says always, that's a discipline. That's something that's gonna keep you in, here's that word again, in proper alignment. Alignment, proper posture to receive. Mom used to always say, you know, and many of the mothers of the church I grew up in, the more you thank him, the more he will do for you. God appreciates it. She would always tell us, thank people when they do things for you. Uh, I'm married to this beautiful, beautiful woman, Rhonda, Lady Rhonda Deloach. And she does the same thing. And it comes from our teaching, comes from our upbringing. We do things for each other, but we don't take it for granted. We always say thank you. I thank you, thank you, sweetheart. Oh, you're welcome. You know, sometimes she'll say thank me, and I'm thinking, thank me for what? Uh, just because you this, just because you are this, just because you show this. Okay, Thanksgiving causes many, many things to happen. So it's the proper alignment, discipline, turning of your thoughts toward the Lord. And what happens through this kind of discipline, doing it every day, knowing what God said, and David goes out on the limb to say, uh, in other words, I'm going to daily perform my vows. He said to you, I'm making a serious commitment to praise you every day. 
He said seven times a day. Seven times. You have to do some research as to when he made that, at what age he was, possibly, if it's there. But do you know, as I said, as a boy, he had discipline. It carried over into his adult life and into his call as a king, his position as a king. You know, he kept doing it. He kept it up. That's why he wrote so many powerful songs because of his personal uh, devotion, his praise life, his lifestyle, and all of that was coming out of his relationship. My God, my God, who am I talking to? Somebody. God is just... He fills you with revelation every time you come into the presence and you got to fight. The enemy fights. He fights you. Come on, you don't struggle with him. Come on, you don't have to struggle with him. You know, uh, keep your commitment, keep your vow and watch God do something. The vow of grace means something. It brings something to you. He fights you because revelation and you need to begin to write. Somebody that's looking at me, somebody that's watching me right now, looking at in my face, God is telling you there are things and nuggets and revelations that he has given you a multiple revelations. You have not heretofore written them down. Somebody needs to get the tablet now and begin to write. Come on, something about writing it down. Write it down. What did he tell uh, um, Habakkuk? He says, write the vision, write it down that he may run who reads it. It may not just be for you. It may be for someone else, but it needs to be written down, but it's coming out of the presence. So our will literally grabs hold of our minds and focuses our attention upon the word and upon the Lord himself. It involves sacrifice. It involves effort. Come on. Oh, I just, it's hard for me to get up. Okay, make an effort. One foot, then the other foot. <laughs> or just roll your body on out of that bed. Or get up from what you're doing. Come on. Get out of that TV program, that favorite show, because... The Lord is calling you. I'm, I'm uh, I don't know. I was up late, went to bed. My wife and I, I got up and and said, you coming to bed? Yes, I'm coming to, went to bed, laying there probably all of maybe 30 minutes and was, was, was sleepy when we went to bed. But all of 30 minutes I'm laying there, not asleep, wide awake. Just begin to hear things, just begin to feel things inside my spirit. So I get up and I go down and I go downstairs and get on my keyboard and start to worship. And I was there for some hours just worshiping and letting God speak to me because I knew he wanted to speak. So there, that it must be a sacrifice, sacrifice. Come on, um, drag that body, drag it up. So it's focusing. Let me hear him get into Thanksgiving. So it involves our effort. It involves, um, amen, uh, sacrificing. It involves our effort. It, it must, it's must. it got to happen every time we come before him. Every time we come into the house of the Lord or in our life on a day-to-day -day basis, every time we come into the house of the Lord, it's got to be evident there. Every time in our private time, our daily devotion with God, it's got to be evident there that it's a sacrifice. There's nothing more important than giving him the sacrifice because we saw what David's life is. He said, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. We saw that uh, the sacrifice, uh, sacrifices of the Lord are broken spirit, are broken in the contrite heart. He will not despise. He's going to always answer. It released miracles. Now, let's go into uh, the the sacrifice of praise, and then uh, thanksgiving, uh, how that thanksgiving releases miracles in our uh, very lives. And I think what I titled, just to put it, I'll put titles on everything, but to put a title on it, amen. Um, I, I wanted to just say that how thanksgiving becomes the trigger, the uh, 
the very thing that releases. And we're going to talk about what a trigger is. And I want to lead into that. What's a trigger? When I praise, I, I, I trigger or I release, I cause, I initiate, I activate, initiate, activate, uh, actuate the supernatural power of God to come into my life. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he created us for his praise and his glory to show forth his praise because it releases, it has so much in my life. Healings. I'm healed many times over. Thought I'd let you know that. Don't have time to go into all those testimonies. You've heard some of them, not all of them, but I'm healed, been healed many times over just by being, sitting in, worshiping in, mm -hmm, in the presence of God Almighty, my God, my Lord, and my Savior. Glory to God. So God has given us this. And in, in my syllabus, I talk about, amen, the very nature of praise and the very nature of worship, how we, how it acts, how we can identify it. But today I want to talk about how important it is to get some miracles in your life, to get some divine responses from God in your life. There's no need to be frustrated. You know what I found out? That frustration comes when we're out of the will and hoping for God to do something, but we're not in the will, which means we're not properly aligned. God blesses order. <laughs> That's why he looks during times of crisis to see what is people, are they properly aligned? Are they doing what they should be doing? If they're doing, are they doing it consistently? They're always going to hear from me. I'll hear from heaven. You'll come on, I'll come where you are. But being out of the will will bring frustration of purpose and vision every time. Pray without ceasing. For this is the will of God in Christ. There's the name. Hebrews 13, 15 talks about the name. David used the name. And in all of these situations where we're going to see, and I don't think today, I know I don't have time to get into it, but that's going to make it even more spicy and juicy and palatable for the next teaching where we see Jesus, the teacher, the introducer of the kingdom. Come on. Yes, uh, the catalyst of the kingdom. He said it comes not just, amen, in words, but it comes with demonstration. We see him triggering miracles by this one word, by this one word called thanksgiving. Raise the dead just by giving thanks. I'm giving you a little prelude. Fed over 5,000 besides women and children. And when you add all those together, it is said, theologically speaking, that it was at least 20,000 could be more by using this one word that triggered, activated. Come on. Uh, what, tr trigger in the verb form, it means to cause an event or a situation to exist, to happen or to exist. And usually suddenly something you did, something you said, that caused something to happen or to suddenly show up, exist, and suddenly Jesus break the bread. Soon as they brought it to him, the first thing he did, he gave thanks before he break it. He, he gave thanks that changed, my God, it changed. It began to release faith in the atmosphere because his disciples were wondering, what is he going to do? Because when they brought the two little fish, the two fish and five loaves, one of his disciples says, but what are they among so many? Wait a minute. Thanksgiving, the trigger, boom, actuate the reality of God in the midst of them. 
to initiate the supernatural, oh, to activate it, glory to God, to initiate it. Come on, somebody, come on, come on. To cause it to spring forth and to exist, to prompt it. It became a prompter, prompting heaven to open and bring the realization of God's power. I taught you that praise and worship will bring the realization, the reality, the realization of God's promises into being. Come on, what was it? Sing, O barren daughter, you who did not bring forth. Barren, womb barren, no history of birth, can't birth, come on. Something's wrong with the womb, but sing, O barren. Singing, he said, will trigger for more are the children of the barren woman than of the married woman, the married wife. You are about to birth because you're about to use what God has given you to trigger the supernatural. Come on, come on. In, in, in the noun form, we know what a trigger is. We, it's usually referred to a device, a small device that's, that releases a spring or a, a catch and sets off a, a, a mechanism, usually, especially in order to fire a gun, uh, cause the bullet to be catapulted from the gun or to, amen, to launch that bullet out of um, the barrel of the gun. Yes, but in this case, we're talking about thanksgiving. That it, it becomes a sacrifice as well to give thanks. Come on. Uh, in, in, in Paul's teaching in, Thessal in Thessalonians, he says, give thanks in all things. He didn't say for all things. And sometimes we, we say, Thank you, Lord. We think everything that happened to us is the will of God. That's not true. We're going to clear up that nonsense. We're going to clear up that misunderstanding, that misnomer. In all things, because in all things, he's saying to us, it begins to make sure as we thank him in the midst of it, we stay aligned to who? The word. The word. And the word of God starts releasing out of our mouths in the midst of that trial in the midst of that catastrophic thing, whatever it is, come on, it's not too hard for God, but we release the answer. We trigger the supernatural to come and overwhelm those circumstances. So to trigger Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving and worship, Thanksgiving, praise and worship. So what is Thanksgiving? How important is that? Got a little bit more time. Morning. Good morning, Sister Jerry. Come on in here. Yes, I'm teaching. Bring somebody. We need some others in here. Come on. Y'all reach out and touch somebody and invite somebody, amen, to this teaching session. Somebody will get some deliverance. I guarantee you, glory to God. I've not been all, up all night for nothing. I've been in the presence of the Lord and I've asked God to breathe over this teaching this morning and I feel the breath. I feel the wind of God. I feel the wind of God pushing and flowing and moving in your direction to let you know, come on, that thing is not too hard for God. You just owe him some thanksgiving. You just need to get in the right posture. You've been out of line. You've been out of posture. When something in your body is out of line, there is great pain. There need not be pain in you in relationship with God. Come on, come on. The joy of the Lord is, it is part of the is part of that covenant. The joy of the Lord, something's out of line. Something's out of fix. And it's not something just Major, 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 major. Now, the enemy want to tell you because you're in sin. And God, it is because the will of God must be done. Thanksgiving. Jesus did it every time. Before he raised Lazarus, called him out of that tomb. He said, Father, thank you mm, that you heard me. You hear me. You've heard me. You always have heard me. And then he just called Lazarus. Nothing else to do. Nothing else to do but to call him. Thanksgiving had, had been released in the atmosphere. Thanksgiving had overwhelmed the spirit of death. Thanksgiving had already overwhelmed the doubts that were in the minds of the people. Thanksgiving changed the atmosphere 
for life to be restored. Hallelujah. So Thanksgiving, what is it? Okay. According to the scripture and the and, and our study, Thanksgiving relates to something. Thanksgiving uh, relates to God's deeds. Well, we use it. Thanksgiving, we use praise, and we work and we do worship. But there are some distinctions. Uh, and I said the overview is always worship. It, it, it is everything is encapsulated in, in that word worship. But there are some th distinctions. Thanksgiving, when we give God thanks. Thanksgiving relates to God's deeds. What he's done. Mother said it. People don't have to do anything for you. So you need to thank them. People always appreciate Thanksgiving when you give thanks. That, that, that's good manners. Hmm? <laughs> evil communication, evil environments corrupt good manners. This, this spiritually is good manners, good teaching, good discipline. We talked about that earlier, discipline to give thanks. In all things, give thanks. He says it in, uh, be filled with the spirit, giving thanks for all things. Wow. Maintain this discipline. So thanksgiving, now praise, we, when, we, when we praise the Lord, Praise relates to God's character, who he is, who he is, who is God. As we've studied about him, we're going to lift up who he is and share that. And we're going to confess it when we address him, when we come before him in our devotion time, in our private times of prayer and, and praise and, and, and study of the word. We're going to acknowledge him, what he's done by thanking him. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for salvation. Matter of fact, uh, I, I love, I love um, good discipline. I, I love the consistency. Sister Jerry, she's one of our um, leaders in our ministry. And in the mornings in our early prayer, she consistently uh, is thanking God. And uh, when, she, when she starts a prayer, you know, she... She thanks God for the forgiveness of her sins and all of that. And I'm like, she does it all the time, consistently giving things. So when we praise him, we're relating to his character. And then, of course, worship relates to God's holiness. That's when we get into the intimacy with God, intimacy. Thanksgiving is a New Testament term or word. Uh, and praise is an Old Testament term. Uh, amen uh, word, amen we see more thanksgiving used in the New Testament than we do praise, praise is an Old Testament word, but I'm glad you asked I'm going, I'm going to break it down and explain it the New Testament scripture regularly speaks of thanksgiving that can be done in, in our hearts yes and in private so it can be done in our hearts and in private, according to the Greek language. Um, the reference made in, in the Greek language, all, all, of the, all of the words in Thanksgiving, well, you know, we don't find in the Bible, it's really hard to find. You, you, you probably won't find it. It's not been found. Most of the theologians think that it's not in the phrase thank you, but the words Thanksgiving and praise. Now, all of the Hebrew terms from the Old Testament for praise have a connotation of being uh, public and open. Thanksgiving in the Greek has the connotation of being uh, private, amen, uh, and in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and in your heart. But public, when the word was used for praise in the Old Testament, is connected to the word thanksgiving. When the word was used to praise, uh, we praise in the Old Testament, it had reference to the word thanksgiving. Thanksgiving then, uh, when used in Old Testament terms or culture, can be silent and private. Amen. Silent or private. Uh, remember when uh, Hannah was worshiping 
and Eli thought she was mad. Words were not coming out, but it was more private. Yes, uh, Thanksgiving may be silent, but praise is vocal in public. Remember, you can't praise him without using your mouth. The fruit of our lips, giving what? Thanks unto his name. So there in, in Hebrews 13, 15, he uses both of the words praise and thanksgiving. Notice how there are times we interchange an Old Testament word, a New Testament word. Praise um, in the Old Testament is the word thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the word praise. Amen. Giving thanks unto his name. Uh, let me give you an example of public worship, even in the New Testament, even though in the Old Testament, it's usually public. But let me show you something in the New Testament. Jesus is riding into Jerusalem, making his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and the children are crying out, a, using a word of endearment, a term of endearment, a praise word, Hosanna, lifting him up, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, describing something about him. And the Lord was empowered by their praise. The zeal for the house of God was eating him up, consuming him. With them crying out, he proceeds to go into the temple and clean it out and drive out the money changers because there were those children as he made his entry into the city of Jerusalem begin to praise him, glory to God, amen. So telling and testifying, they're telling and testifying of who Jesus is, telling it to others of who he is and what he has done. So many of our translations carry the word thanks or thanksgiving in scripture uh, in an explanatory sense. What do I mean by that? Well, in the Old Testament culture, again, the word used in place of thanks was praise. And as it's translated, thanks, it is translated thanks. In the word for, it's the same word for hand. Wow. Praise, thanks, hand. Thus, the, the Hebrew word, one of the Hebrew words for praise in the Old Testament is Toda and yada, hand. Let me give you more depth here. Um, yada, it's to throw out the hand. It's to throw out the hand. That's a root word, to throw out the hand in expression of praise and thanksgiving. Uh, is an expression, the secondary root for the word praise is to be intimate, to be intimate. Mm. The purpose of intimacy is for empowering, impregnating intimately, impregnating you with God's will, God's purpose, God's power. It is to empower you, <laughs> glory to God. Praise is a reciprocal uh, connection with you and God. Relationship is required. The root word of praise is to be intimate. So in this, the hand. So when they were said to praise God, it meant to extend or stretch forth the hand or lift up the hand to God in acknowledgement of who he is what he has done, his name. Uh, the old saints used to sing the song, um, stretch out your hand, stretch out, singing it to God. Your hand, stretch out your hand. Oh Lord, are you over us? And God, when he, he admonishes us to praise, he is saying, stretch forth your hand. He's telling you to pray. We should be stretching forth or stretching up, lifting up the hands. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. How can I bless him? You don't know what I've been through. No need to know. In all things, 
Ooh, help me teach this. In all things, give thanks. In all things, tell somebody that. In all things, give thanks because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Give or lift up the hand. And when the hand is lifted up, here's another word, um, deeper meaning in the lexicon. Uh, it's the root word for praise is, another root word for praise is axel. Axel is a device for turning things. The axle on the car turns things. In this connotation, it is so powerful to me. You want to turn some things around. The hand. It also means the hand. It means, the hand means power. You have power with God when you praise him. You, hey, you have power to, come on, let that axel mentality begin to kick in. That axel definition begin to kick in. Your hand has power to turn circumstances, to turn environments. Jesus did it when he released things. Turn the doubt that's in the atmosphere. Turn that negative prophetic word that the devil sent over you, spoke over your family. Turn things that have followed you, that's keeping you bound. Turn when you just lift up the hand and it's a hand of intimacy. It even suggests to be sexually intimate, intimate with the Father. God wants intimate with, intimacy with you. And in there, you it's in my syllabus, is to stare in the face of God. And there's no way you're gonna talk to God about who he is and he don't tell you who you are. There's no way that you're going to tell God how much he, you love him and he don't tell you back how much he loves you because it's a reciprocal relationship. It's it, it, Come on. When we worship him, when we praise him, yes, thanksgiving triggers the supernatural. You can get a chance today. Come on. And remember that trigger is something that initiate causes Come on, something to exist causes something to happen and to suddenly exist that had not existed heretofore. You trigger the supernatural power of God. David knew this more than anybody else knew it. David knew when there was trouble on the horizon, but see, he was proactive. He didn't wait to trouble. He had a lifestyle, and that's why he was so powerful. What's the secret of his power? His worship life. Secret of his power to fight was his worship life. Empowered. How did he get faith? Through his worship lifestyle. Come on. Worship will lead us to a greater faith in God. How a great faith in God. He could talk faith talk. He taught, I love his faith talk. How he talked to the giant. Come on. Like he owned him. Come on. The giant gonna threaten him. Here's this little boy looking up at a nine foot tall giant. And talking to him like, like come on, there's nothing you can do. It's over for you. But when he said, I come in the name, that was it. He triggered the supernatural power of God for deliverance to come suddenly. Right now. Turn it around, open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing overflow. Turn it around, open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing we cannot contain. Oh, let it rain. I got it out. <laughs> Glory to God. Turn it around. Somebody said, turn. Come on. Turn the axle. Turn the negative action. Turn the negative prognostication from your physician. Turn the evil report. Turn the negative report. Hallelujah, God, my God, my God. Turn it, turn it, turn it. So the hand, Toda, Jonah did it. I was sacrificed with the voice of thanksgiving. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you've gone through. Don't matter the attacks. 
Something gets out of line and I believe your thanksgiving will get the job done. Your thanksgiving, your thanksgiving. Come on, somebody, help me out here. Uh, glory to God. So then uh, let's look back again before I close out. I want to look back again. Glory to God. Let me find it in my notes. Amen. We already said what he said in Ephesians, understanding what the will of God is and how that we've got to understand to be in the will of God, how we've got to, to give thanks. we got to give thanks. we got to give thanks. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. So then the, the Hebrew concept is stretching out or lifting up the hands. Amen. New Testament word for thanks. Oh yeah, I got to give you that. The Old Testament word for thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. Is toda. Okay. Stretching out or lifting up the hands. All right. The New Testament word for thanks in the Greek is charis. Is the word charis. C-H-A-R-I-S is where we get our word charismatic, very charismatic, effervescent, charismatic in our praise. Uh, it comes from and is related to the word for grace, mm, grace. So in other words, Thanksgiving then is our uh, appropriate response in my syllabus, I talk about how that worship is man's first principal response to God at creation. Him being created, his first response is thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. The Old Testament word is thanks or praise. His first response is praise. God put him in the garden to do one thing. It is to, uh, to till and uh, to cause others to till, to till, which means to worship, to thanks or to praise and to thanks and keep that covenant of praise because it keeps him attached. It keeps him linked. It keeps him connected. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it keeps him using the power that's in his hands. So then the enemy shouldn't control your house. The enemy should control your prosperity, or how, uh, uh, having uh, what you need. The enemy shouldn't control your moods. You have the power of the hand, Toda, to stretch forth or to stretch up the hand. And also it has the connotation of anticipation of what God is going to do before manifestation. And your constant praise and thanksgiving attitude is going to cause a supernatural manifestation to happen because you're changing the dynamic. You're changing the narrative. You're changing the atmosphere. Thanks. Drop what you're doing and lift your hands up. Stop complaining about how hard things are, how things have been that you're dealing with. And I dare you to lift your hands up. If you're working, get your break, take your break. Get your, get your break when you're on your lunch time. There you go somewhere and just begin to go somewhere and give God thanks. In all things, it's, it's rich. So it's, it, Thanksgiving is an appropriate response, our appropriate response to God's grace in our lives. What he's done, his divine influence upon our heart, grace, things he's done in spite of us, things he's done for us in regards to you know, how we've lived in the past. So we've got to give thanks. Now here it is. The word states in Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. And notice the sequence of these verses. Verse 16 says, rejoice evermore. What? Rejoice evermore. Rejoice all the time. <laughs> uh, as 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 a as a pastor, you know there are times that we just will get into high praise, get into you know just intense worship, and I I love to see because I'm a keyboardist and I'm usually playing the keyboard. Sometimes the Lord will just tell me to step away, and you know and let them become you know making melody in your heart. 
Yeah, can we withhold the, the melody that I give on the keyboards? And I'm doing it by the spirit as I hear. But making melody in their hearts, let them become the melody. The melody, let them become an instrument that resounds in praise, an instrument that resounds in praise and worship. I want to hear their personal melody. I want to hear what's coming out of the uh, recesses of their uh, deepest portions of their heart, out of the uh, abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks and the mouth praises. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember, thanksgiving uh, that can be uh, in a sacrifice out of the heart. The posture is there. It's coming out of your heart. I want to hear them. And I love to see those expressions. And then when we're in high praise, I love to see the see the consistency of those who are praising this way. Now, because I'm concerned when you were praising a certain way in high praise last week, and what's wrong with the expression? Where's the expression on this week? Uh, always pray. He said, rejoice in the 16th verse and uh, uh in Thessalonians 5, 6, 19, oh, rejoice evermore. Who am I talking to? In Philippians, he talks about rejoice in the Lord always and again, and again, and again. I dare you to write in your notes, uh, in your comments, Again, rejoice or rejoice again. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, but I, 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 I had peace. I had rest from a time of great tribulation, but I'm in a great trial. He says, rejoice evermore. Get your hand up. Remember, the hand is interpreted power. The same word. <laughs> in the Old Testament, hallelujah, for thanks is hand, for praise is hand. Get your hands up, somebody. I'm coming out with my hand or my hands lifted up because I'm lifting them up to the only one who has the answer and he's not withholding it from me. He just has instructed me to praise him, glory to God. Mm. He's going to reciprocally respond to whatever, whatever is needed, whatever is wanted, whatever is needed. Hallelujah. I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing your, I'm closing. Yes, I am. So rejoice evermore. Verse uh 17 says, pray without ceasing. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop rejoicing. Don't stop praying. This is your posture. This is your discipline. This is where your sacrifice is going to show up that you've been doing it. Amen. You've been doing it. You can tell sometimes when people are struggling to, to overcome, uh, they, they don't have the discipline. They've not been doing it. When you've be, been doing it, your conversation portrays who you are and what your activity has been in your private time with God and in your relationship with God. You can tell how we speak. Come on. I, I read something the other day that was disturbing to me because it was coming from the platform of leadership and it was something depressing. I'm like, how in the world will the followers, will the believers uh, begin to extend faith or begin to lay hold of the faith of God to overcome the situation, to overcome that thing? Come on. When I stand before the people to lead, I must lead by example. Come on. I must lead them to God. I must believe what I'm preaching and I must believe what I'm teaching. Come on, come on. It betrays who you are because you've been doing it. You've been doing it. Just do it. Rejoice ever, evermore. Pray without ceasing. Verse 18, in everything, in all things, give thanks for this is. Come on, 
I'm one of those, this people. I got to say it again. I'm going back to an early reference. This people have a chosen in everything. Give thanks for this is the will, the purpose, the plan. First John 3, 8, for this purpose, for this purpose, for this purpose was Christ revealed that he may destroy the works of the enemy. The enemy apparently had been working and he works now. But guess what? We have an answer. God revealed Christ that he may destroy the works of the enemy. He gave us everything, Christ. So how do we use, how, how do, he's not here with us, but he's here with us in spirit and he's given us his name, acknowledging the name, praise. Therefore, off of the sacrifice of praise unto God, continuously all the time, rejoicing all the time, praying all the time. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name, release the name. And then the, he says, 18 verse again, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Make the connection. In the name, in Christ Jesus, concerning you. 19, then he closes by quench not the spirit. So this is God's will for us. So if we don't give thanks, we're out of the will. You gonna stand by? If we don't give thanks, we're not in the will. We're prompted by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit teaches us what the will of God is. This is the will of God. So if we're not thinking it, we're out of the will. So we want to clear up this thing, as I said earlier, about we say, well, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, evidently God wanted it to happen. That's not true. St. John 10, 10 says that thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what the thief came to do. It didn't say Jesus came to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus follows that up by saying, but I have come, but I have come that they, they, you, may have life and have life more abundantly. I come that you might have life more abundantly. Life. So if I say that, I want to thank him for everything that's happened, you know? Are you going to really thank God for someone, one of your relatives who died without Jesus? Are you thankful for that? God didn't want him to die out of the will without Jesus. In all things, in all things, come on, help me here. In all things, in all things, he's saying that in the midst of it, you know, uh, is it, it, are we to be thankful for cancer? permeating our bodies and destroying our bodies, giving us a low expectation and taking our hope. No, but in it, give thanks because what Thanksgiving does, it releases and triggers the supernatural. It begins, come on, it brings us into more of an in-depth praise relationship it's the hand of power. It's the hand of intimacy. It's the hand of expression, of thanksgiving and appreciation. It's the hand. <laughs> -hoo 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 -hoo. Glory to God. That, that with this hand, we're causing things to turn. Turn, turn, turn. Thank God for the miracle that's going out today. All things, give thanks, because this is the will of God. It triggers the supernatural power of God. Amen. Uh, so, Jesus did it. We're going to talk about it next time. I just need to stop here. 
because I know uh, where this is going. And I can tell you about so many miracles that the Lord has worked in my life. So many blessings that's come as a result of continuing into the time of thanksgiving with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Sister Jerry. Thank you, Lord. You might have to write down, uh, you know, because if, if, we're, if we're highlighting the conditions, we're giving it priority over God's word and God's will. If we're not giving things in the midst, we're not in the will. Amen. We're not in the will. Somebody give thanks to the Lord now. Father, we just thank you right now for this time of sharing. We thank you for what you've said to us. We thank you for what you're doing right now. We praise you, God, for uh, we, Oh, glory to God. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the midst of it, thank you. In the midst of it, you're releasing your best. Thank you. In the midst of it, you're causing us to turn, hallelujah, the diagnosis. In the midst of it, ha, ha, glory to God. In the midst of the pain, we're coming out because we're giving you thanksgiving. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, Philippians 4, 6 says, be careful for nothing. Don't have anxiety for any reason. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. In the midst of it, he says, hallelujah, be careful for nothing but in all things by prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving. So what is he saying? Prayer, supplication. Uh, notice the relationship between prayer. With prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving, let your request be made. Supplication is the prayer request. We make many prayer requests, but we don't couple it with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving turns it. Thanksgiving releases the supernatural to come suddenly. It initiates what God has waiting for you. It prompts it. It actuates it to become reality. And I'll say this again. Praise precedes the re realization of the promise. Seeing somebody. You've been barren of your miracle. You haven't had it. You've been barren of the peace that you're supposed to have as a believer. Sing. Get your hands up. Thanks. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. In all things, we give you thanks. We give you praise and thanksgiving at all times in everything. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. <laughs> well, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I want to thank you. I want to give you just a couple of more announcements, announcements here and before I sign off, um, we, we're going to let you know about next week. Uh, next week will definitely be day before Thanksgiving. We have a, a lot of activity going on. I love this time of year when we uh, just spend quality time with our families. And I just won't go there to say that this is just a time we all get now. Uh, I'm teaching. We, yeah. Uh, it's just so appropriate that I'm on Thanksgiving, giving Thanksgiving to God. Thanks. But it's not a one-day affair. It's not a holiday thing. It's a lifestyle. But this is set aside to be a holiday that we can do this and just uh, begin to thank God. Just love it. And uh, there are a lot of people who are going to be grateful, amen, for some things <laughs> that I do uh, that goes without saying uh, amen, Sister Jerry, amen, uh, Lady Rhonda. But it's going to be a busy week, so we'll announce whether we're going to be on next week. But I'm excited about the next teaching 
because we're going to go in and just see in Jesus' light the catalyst of the kingdom, the uh, introducer of the kingdom, the one who demonstrated the kingdom, how he made Thanksgiving apply, how he applied using thanks. Thank you, Father. And we saw all the time, always, it caused something to happen. It triggered something to happen. It triggered a divine response suddenly. It caused something that was not there to come into existence. Yes, he's given it to us to do. Amen and amen, yes. All right. All right, let me give you this uh, announcement again. I want to give you the access number to the prayer line because we want you to be in there. We have a guest tonight. We have a guest tonight. Oh, my God, you you want to be there. We've had five-fold ministry gifts coming from all over the country. Uh, this person is, is from another state going to join us tonight. They're going to join us in prayer and pray with us. Amen. Yes. So the conference line is 267-807-9611. And the access code is 577-327, hashtag or pound. Again, 267-807-9611. Access code is 577-327, pound. You don't want to miss it. Bring your prayer requests. And if it's not private, come in and join us. We always have prayer time at the end. I'm excited. I'm excited about all of us who are going to be praying. Our prayer uh, leader leads us. We're going to have some praise and worship. You want to? You don't want to miss that time because in the beginning, come on, 10 minutes before we open the lines at 10 minutes before the hour, before 7. And I'm usually playing the keyboard, setting the atmosphere. Amen releasing worship, releasing thanks, releasing adoration to God. And then we go into our times of prayer. Remember, this is somebody's lifeline. And we are throwing out, as the old song says, throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Someone is drifting, drifting away. Throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline. Why? Because someone is sinking today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're going to check out of here. We're going to check out of here. Somebody, I hear you saying, Pastor, how can I sow into this soil? Amen. We don't take it for granted that you come and you trust the word of, of God that comes out of us is the real word of God, the true word of God. Nothing watered down. Um, Stability is there. We're not teaching any erroneous doctrine, but we're teaching what the Word of God says. So you can sow by uh, doing a cash app, dollar sign PCCFAN, or PayPal.me forward slash Praise Center Church for all nations. Well, we want to bid you a blessed day. Uh, be blessed in the Lord the rest of your day. Amen. And we'll look to see you uh, next week. Uh, well, this Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Amen. Central Time, Standard Time on our Worship and Word segment. And those of you that want to be in uh, an anointed worship, preaching, teaching service, join us for our Sunday morning live in-house service at the Hilton Garden Inn in North Little Rock, that's where we meet. And I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord hovers, settles. And we believe that when you go in there, when they go in there and have their meetings after we're gone, we believe that the presence of God is so hovering in that place to the point that when we were not there, the, the, the uh, managers told us how much they missed us while we were gone. I believe it because I believe God does something and speaks out of his presence. Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., join us. Come on, come on, join us in the presence. God always gives a word. 
He always gives a word. That's at the Hilton Garden Inn in North Little Rock, right off McCain Boulevard. And let me just give you a marker. I like to do that. Right turn left, right at the uh, Popeye's Chicken onto Good Auburn Lane, and you're looking at the Hilton Garden Inn. And we will be there in Pinnacle A Room. Pinnacle. I love the word Pinnacle. <laughs> Woo. On high, worshiping God. Well, we love you with the love of the Lord, and there's nothing you can do about it. Bless you, man of God. Bishop, Bishop Williams. You got in. You can look at it again. Good, always glad to see you, man of God. Good day, everybody. We love you.